Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation about adversarial patch camouflage against aerial detection. Here you can see an overview of the different points that I'll cover today. I will start uh, with an explanation about the use case of uh, aerial camouflage. Uh, second, uh, I will talk about uh, a bit of a background of uh, adversarial attacks. Further, I will explain our method uh, and how uh, it is applied on the aerial use case. Further, um, I will um, explain the results of our experiment and uh, I will end uh, with the conclusions. We see that the use of unmanned drones uh, for aerial surveillance is increasing. Uh, and these drones have cameras on board that can uh, record a big uh, area. Um, and these drones can be used to detect uh, potential adversaries on the ground. On the aerial footage, uh, automatic analysis can be done by detecting the objects on the ground. Uh, for that, you can use the current state-of-the-art uh, deep learning models. Um, and these models approach hum human level performance for several uh, detection tasks. The use of automatic analysis can be leveraged by operators who want to know what is happening on the ground. Uh, these operators might not have sufficient time or capacity uh, to manually go through days of footage made by the, by the drone. Uh, so they can use uh, an automatic detection a method uh, that can make a pre-selection pre for them and we expect that this kind of automatic detection method uh, will be used more and more uh, in the future. So far I've explained the aerial use case uh, and the increasing use of automatic analysis uh, on uh, drone footage. Uh, further, I'm going to give a bit of a background about uh, adversarial attacks. Previous research has shown that the deep learning model can be fooled. On the right, uh, you can see an example of how a person's detector is fooled. Uh, so the person on the right uh, is holding a carefully designed uh, visual patch. Um, and because of, the, of this patch, this person is effectively camouflaged uh, from uh, the person's detector model. The traditional form of camouflage in the aerial use case uh, is uh, to hide the object from the human eye. An example is shown uh, on the left. However, if an automatic analysis is used uh, for pre-selection, another form of camouflage can be to hide the object from the automatic detector. So an, ex an example of a drone image is uh, shown on the right. Here you can see an image of a, an aeroplane. And on top of the aeroplane, uh, you see uh, a relatively uh, small patch uh, that is carefully designed to avoid the detection of this aeroplane from the automatic detector. Um, so this kind of camouflage is the focus of our work. Let's now look at how these patches uh, that can hide objects from object detectors are trained. Our work is based on the method that was used to camouflage persons from a person's detector. Uh, this is a method that you saw earlier. We applied and fine-tuned this method for aerial detection. Uh, and in our experiments, we focus on hiding airplanes from an object detector. Here you can see an overview of how the patches are generated such that they can hide objects from an object detector. On the bottom left you can see the current adversarial patch which is initialized with random colors. It is placed on the top of the objects that, wants, that one wants to hide. In this case uh, they are aeroplanes. The patches are scaled, rotated, corrupted with uh, some noise and contrast stretched such that they resemble real-life recording conditions before placing them uh, on the objects. Uh, in our scenario, the patches are randomly rotated over 360 degrees since there is no fixed orientation in aerial images. The YOLO network is used for training. 
the loss uh, of this network uh, includes a term to decrease the objectiveness of the objects. Uh, it further has a non-printability term such that the colors are printable uh, and can be used in real life. Uh, and a total variation term uh, that prevents the patch from becoming a noise patch. Uh, the YOLO network weights are frozen and only the patch is optimized in each iteration to decrease the objectiveness of the objects for this detection model. To make the attack practical, we consider different patch properties. We did five different experiments in which we varied how the patches are placed on the airplanes. Here you can see three of them. The images on the right illustrate how the patches are placed on the airplanes during testing and training. The images on the left are the final patches after training for each of the configuration. The relative size of the patch with respect to the airplanes is important. How bigger the patch, how more ineffective uh, it becomes. Therefore, we consider multiple patch sizes. The first experiment is done with a large patch and the second with a much smaller patch. The camouflage would be more practical if the patch does not have to be placed uh, on top of the airplanes. Therefore, in the third experiment, we place the patch next to the airplane. All of the final uh, trained patch contain mostly circular symmetric patterns and bright colors seem uh, to be important to, to fool the object detector. Here are other two experiments. The patches so far are very colorful as you saw earlier. However, it is useful if the patches are less salient so that it is harder to detect them by an automatic defense mechanism or more difficult to spot them by the human eye. To achieve this, we add an extra loss term that steers the optimization process towards a less colorful patch. This extra term shows uh, its effect on the final patch. As you can see, it is much, much less salient uh, and contains mostly black and white colors. At last, we experiment with multiple small patches instead of a larger patch because a two, smaller patch, two smaller patches can be more practical to place on top of an object, especially if the object has an irregular shape. The final patch of the last experiment coincidentally looks an awful lot like a one-eyed smiley. Now let's look at how these patches perform. I will discuss the experimental results of three patch configurations. The experiments were performed on a YOLO object detection model. We used the DOTA dataset which contains large-scale aerial images and our focus is on hiding aeroplanes from this YOLO object detector. Covering an object with any type of patch will naturally decrease its visibility and therefore each configuration is also evaluated with a patch with random colors, similar to a camouflage net. This noise patch is taken as a baseline for comparison. Here you can see an example of the large patch configuration. The random patch placement is shown on the left and the final uh, trained patch placement on the right. Here you can see that the large patch does not show added value compared to the noise patch on the left. Let's look at the quantitative results. Here you can see the precision recall curve. The precision recall curve displays the fraction of the detected planes in the dataset, which is the recall, versus the fraction of the detected planes in the detector output, which is the precision. A good object detector has high values for both precision and recall. In other words, the curve is then close to the upper right area in the graph. In contrast, a good adversarial attack will make the object detector perform poorly with low precision and recall values so that the curve is pushed uh, towards the lower left area in the graph. The blue curve shows the evaluation of the detections uh, on the raw, raw images, but since they are taken as ground truth, it will by default equal to 100% precision. The orange curve 
is evaluation with the noise, noise patch and the green curve with the trained final patch. The large patch decreases the average precision of the model to 5.6% and is therefore very effective. However, the baseline noise patch also has a considerable, considerable effect of 52% average precision simply due to its size. For example, if we choose a realistic precision value which is typically used in practice of 80%, then, 38% of the airplanes are detected using the baseline noise patch and no airplanes are detected with the trained patch. Here you can see an illustration of the trained small patch. In contrast to the large patch, we see a big difference between the noise patch and the trained small patch. In the case of the noise patch, almost all of the airplanes are detected. For the trained patch, however, only two of them are detected and the rest are hidden from the object detector. Here you can see the quantitative evaluation of the small patch. The small patch achieves a big decrease compared to the noise patch, namely from 94% average precision to 37% average precision. For the precision value of 80%, Almost all of the airplanes are detected with the baseline noise patch and only 23% of the airplanes are detected with the small patch. This is a large decrease of 67%. This really shows that the patches do more than just occluding a small part of the object. At last, this is an illustration of the less saturated patch. In this example, the less saturated patch is able to hide some airplanes compared to the noise patch. If we look at the precision recall curve, we see that it achieves a decrease of 23% average precision compared to the noise patch. For the realistic precision value of 80%, we can see that 92% of the airplanes are detected with the noise patch, which is the baseline that we use and 65% of the airplanes are detected with the less saturated patch. Uh, the less saturated patch performs much less compared to the colorful small patch, so this suggests that the use of colors play an important role in fooling an object detection model. So far, first, I've explained the aerial use case and the increasing use of automated analysis. Next, I discussed the previous research on patch attack, including camouflaging a person. Further, we looked at how the patches are generated and the patch properties that make an attack practical for aerial camouflage. Next, we looked at the experimental results of the different patch configurations. And now, let's end the presentation with future work and the conclusions. We had simulated real-life conditions by adding noise to the patch during training and testing. However, a real test would be to put these patches on a real aeroplane and evaluate its effect. The experiments were done on the YOLO object detector um, and it is interesting as future work to see how transferable this method is to others, uh, other types of detectors. An interesting line of research is to perform an ensemble training on multiple types of detectors simultaneously. At last, next to the attacks, we are uh, currently also working on defense mechanisms to mitigate these types of uh, adversarial attacks. The results show that relatively small patches can camouflage airplanes from a YOLO object detector. The baseline noise patches have much smaller effect. We also trained a less saturated patch. This patch, however, was less effective than the patches with more color. This suggests that bright colors play an important role in fooling an object detector. We can conclude by saying that patch attacks form a potential alternative to traditional camouflage when using automatic image analysis. Thank you for attention and interest in this topic. Any questions or comments are welcome.